Wow. There are some shocking new updates on the Rex Heuerman, a.k.a. Long Island SK case. So let's dive right in and talk about it. Well, hello, my silky friends. Yes, Rex Heuerman is back in the news again today, but this time, a shocker. His daughter has now been named in some kind of suspicious stuff. But is she guilty? I don't know. Let's look at it. Okay, so here is Rex. Man, he doesn't look any better for prison, does he? <laughs> wow, this guy just can't seem to stay out of trouble. The prosecutors hit him with two more charges of unaliving earlier this month for a couple more victims. That was Jessica Taylor, a 20-year-old escort who went missing back in 2003, and Sandra Castilla, whose remains were found way back in 1993. In Southampton. So, you know, we thought Gilgo Beach started in 1997. This is 1993. It makes you wonder just how far this is going to go back. But get this. The cops say they found what looks like Hewerman's own twisted how-to guide for unaliving people. Apparently, this messed up document from the early 2000s had all these creepy notes about removing victims' tattoos to hide their identity. And, mm, bodies, you know, kind of putting them in pieces uh, by removing heads and hands. It is straight out of your worst nightmare or a horror movie, right? So, there was a discovery of a very disturbing planning document. Investigators uncovered a chilling Word document on a hard drive seized from Heuerman's home that appears to be a detailed blueprint for unaliving people. Man, this document is riddled with typos and misspellings, and it contains sections outlining steps for selecting and preparing victims that was the pre-prep stage it was like all in little columns have y'all seen this a body prep is talking about how to remove parts and dispose of the bodies and then there was the post event now this was to avoid detection after the crimes the document listed dna as a top concern well yeah and included notes about removing victims' tattoos and other identifying marks. Prosecutors believe this was Heuerman's self-made manual for carrying out the unalivings. And I have to wonder, is this something that he could have shared or maybe was planning to share with other people on the dark web? That's just the way my brain goes, okay? So the evidence against him for these new charges is, seems pretty damning, too. Uh, they say that male hairs found on both Taylor and Castilla's bodies were an exact match to Heuerman's DNA, like a 99.96% certainty kind of match. So that makes prosecutors think that Castilla the one from 1993, may have been his very first victim. Now, I am going to say I think it started earlier, but that's just me. Of course, Hewerman pleaded not guilty again after his latest indictment. Like, you're, you're going to have a 99.96 match, but you're going to say not guilty. Okay, Rex. His lawyer says he's in a bad place behind bars, you think? But is questioning whether he actually wrote that disturbing little plan or not. But either way, this guy is still locked up with no bail while awaiting trial, thank goodness, for what could end up being at least six crimes tied to him. I mean, this is just a crazy, chilling case that seems to get worse with every new revelation about his alleged crimes. Now, in the picture, you will see Jessica Taylor on the left and Sandra Castilla on the right. But here's where it gets even worse. Let's talk about electronic devices and online activity. 
Hundreds of electronic devices seized from Hillman's home and office revealed searches related to the victims, the investigation status, and data wiping software. Now, when you go down into the details, there are so many devices and something like 40-something phones. Like, who has this much electronics? Well, apparently, Hillman, if you have got a plan. Two phones allegedly used for contacting these escorts were also found. Prosecutors obtained travel records showing Hewerman's family was away when some of the events occurred, allowing him to commit the crimes undetected. They even tracked down Hewerman's daughter to collect DNA from a discarded drink can. In summary, the disturbing planning document, extensive DNA evidence tying Hewerman to the victims, and the incriminating data from his electronic devices and online activity were critical new pieces of evidence that emerged against the accused Gilgo Beach SK. But we are not done with his daughter. Now, there was a huge press conference on this. I'm not going to go into the details, okay? But let's talk for just a moment about Victoria Hewerman. Okay, Victoria Hewerman's Tumblr posts and artwork played a potentially significant role in the case against her father, Rex. So according to attorney John Ray, who represents families of some of the victims, they revealed some disturbing details about Victoria's Tumblr blog during a press conference. He displayed several images from her account that depicted scenes eerily similar to her father's alleged crimes, such as an image of a person with a rope around their neck with a missing shoe, resembling how victim Sandra Castilla was found. Hmm. An image of a, another person with a rope with hair that was like Rex Hewerman's. Images showing remains that appeared half-eaten, suggesting, of course, interest in, you can see the word, that type of activity. Now, here is a picture of Victoria. Ray claimed that Victoria's online presence showed her true self compared to her public appearances where she seemed very innocent. He suggested that Victoria may have been surrounded or even leaked to some of her father's unalivings. The search results also mention a Microsoft Word document found on Rick Hewerman's computer that appeared to be the blueprint and this document referenced needing items like a hairnet, which Ray believes would connect to Victoria's involvement based on the similarities in her artwork. I mean, it doesn't sound great, I'll be honest with you. While the extent of Victoria's role is not conclusively stated, the search results indicate her disturbing Tumblr posts and artwork are being presented as potential circumstantial evidence of her being aware of or connected to her father's alleged crimes in some way. Her online activity has opened up a new avenue for investigation, according to the victim's attorney. The revelation of these graphic Tumblr images portraying an aliving, dismembering, and eating, let's just say it that way, created an extremely negative public perception of Victoria. It fueled speculation that evidence-based theories on Reddit that she could be guilty and potentially suffered from Stockholm Syndrome due to being surrounded by her father's alleged crimes. Now, Stockholm Syndrome is where a captive actually becomes reliant on and loves their captor. You know what I'm saying? Think of what happened like forever ago in the case of Patty Hearst and others. So here is the thing. Did Victoria know anything about Rex's activities? Did she suspect? Because a lot of people are saying that they are being too harsh on Victoria, that she just kind of liked the, you know, horror movie genre and artwork and that kind of stuff. And certainly there are a lot of people who just kind of go in that direction. 
and they're not ever going to participate in a crime. So that alone, in my opinion, does not make her guilty. However, if they would find, you know, maybe some hairs at the scene or something, which wouldn't be 100% conclusive either, in my opinion, because he lives with her, you know, you know what I'm saying, stuff from the house. I think they're going to have to research a little bit more, dig a little bit deeper, because at this point, I can't say that I feel like she knew. But that could change. Now, what about that sixth sense we have? What if she just, she didn't know? No, but she felt something w was weird or off. And it, you know, I would think there would have to be a lot of darkness in that house, right? Just with what was going on with Rex and, you know, all that. So what do you think? Do you think at this point that Victoria was involved or not? And what do you think about these latest updates? Third question. Do you think that they are going to find more victims further back in time and relate them back to Rex Hewerman at some time? I just would love to know your thoughts. All right. That's the update for today. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I will see you later. Stay safe and whatever you do, for heaven's sakes, just stay silky, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>